People often ask me how to break a bad habit. Now, I'm in two minds as to whether an alcohol addiction or an alcohol problem is a habit or whether it's a behavior, a learned behavior, a coping mechanism. But either way, these tips on breaking a bad habit are gonna help you learn how to overcome any kind of behavior that feels compulsive, you feel drawn to do it, even though you know it's causing damage to your life. I'm Simon Chappell, I'm the Quit Alcohol Coach and the author of How to Quit Alcohol in 50 Days and the Sober Survival Guide. I hope you've read my books. If not, you can see them on the screen right now and I'd recommend checking them out. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel. There's new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday. My mission is to help share the joys of an alcohol-free life and help people understand that there's so much to gain from living alcohol-free and that we don't actually lose anything, even though it feels like we do at the start when we try and quit alcohol. So do subscribe to the channel because you'll get a lot out of it. It can really help you on your journey. So in terms of learning how to break a habit, learning how to change a behavior, the first thing to do is to think about the three, the six, the three R's. The first R is reminders. What reminds you of the behavior? And those reminders can be a cue that can lead to a trigger or a craving in the context of alcohol to drink. And that could be something as simple as driving past a store where you used to buy alcohol or seeing an advertising billboard with your old brand of beer or wine that you used to drink. So think about the reminders and think about what boundaries you can put in place to minimize your exposure to those reminders. Now, of course, it's not always possible. And there's other videos on my channel that will share tactics that will help you deal with those feelings if they come up. For example, even the sound of ice falling into a glass or a song on the radio can cause a trigger to drink. It can cause that reminder. And of course, we can't stop everything coming into our world. We can minimize it and we can set boundaries to keep ourselves as safe as possible, but you can't stop everything. So make sure you're also armed with some tactics. If one of those cravings strikes, it will really, really help you. The second R is routine. And I used to drink to a routine. It would be every evening. I would normally start drinking about 7 p.m. When my son was younger, it was as soon as he went to bed. Try and pay attention to your routine and then think how you can disrupt it and create a new positive sober routine. Maybe you could do something else, go for walks at the times that you used to drink or read a book or do something completely different, something that brings you joy. And before you know it, you won't be thinking about alcohol because you'll be so busy doing something else instead. And the third R, and probably the most important and addictive is reward. And the reward is the dopamine hit that alcohol or any other kind of addictive habit gives us. And that dopamine is linked to our reward center in our brain, and it makes us want to do it again. It gives us a drive to do it again, to repeat the feeling. And that is what makes it addictive. That's what makes the habit stick. So by finding new sources of dopamine, new places where we can get that feeling of happiness and joy, and as I mentioned, creating a new routine is a great way of doing it, you will find other sources of dopamine. And you will need to put a little bit of work in. You will need to find what gives you that same dopamine hit. And you need to bear in mind, alcohol is a drug. And you may not get the exact same dopamine hit, but I can assure you after a period of time without drinking, you'll find that the other sources of dopamine, the things that maybe at the moment don't seem all that exciting, start to fill you with real joy. You start to feel truly fulfilled in your life. The color comes back into the things that were previously black and white when alcohol was interfering with everything. Trust me on this. Trust the process and know that if you start looking for the things that really light you up and bring a level of happiness into your life, 
it will develop. You'll get more and more happiness, more and more joy from it over time. Find some new hobbies. Look at the things you used to do when you were younger that you used to become immersed in and dive back into them. Get out the old guitar, start learning a new language, whatever it is, get your painting set out and do a wonderful watercolor painting. Whatever you need to do to get that healthy, happy source of dopamine, definitely go and do that. You should also take the time to get really clear on your triggers. And I mean triggers to drink, things that cause cravings. This can be certain times of day, or it can be when you're doing certain things. I mentioned reminders. For some people, that might be when they're cooking the evening meal. They might have always drunk a glass of wine with their evening meal, and that craving strikes at that sort of time or when they're doing the cooking. Again, take some steps. Can someone else do the cooking? Can you get takeaways for a week or two? Make sure there's some healthy ones. I don't want you eating two weeks worth of pizzas or you'll be messaging me saying that you've put on loads of weight. So obviously be sensible with your diet too. But that's a great example of where you could put some boundaries in place. Maybe you could make all your meals during the day at the weekend and then freeze them and do them for the week ahead so you don't have the trigger of cooking if that was a specific trigger point for you but you need to make sure you identify them and then you need to put some steps in place so that your sobriety is protected and your sobriety comes first and i think to break any kind of habit or to change any kind of addictive behavior you've got to make it valuable and what i mean by that is you've got to want it you've got to have a mindset that your goal that you're working towards is really valuable to you. It has a really huge value and you want this badly. That's how you get the right mindset and that's how you feel super motivated. So make sure you focus on learning everything that you gain when you quit drinking and start to realize that actually we don't lose anything other than hangovers and not carrying out regrettable behavior. We don't lose anything when we quit alcohol. If you can get really clear on that, you start to form a real true vision of how much better your life will be. And then you start to realize that actually, yeah, I want this. This is valuable to me. I become a better parent. I become a better partner, a better colleague, a better member of society. And surely that is of a high value to you. So make sure you understand and you're really clear on the true value of what sobriety will bring to your life. It's going to make you want it so much more. One of the big things that helped me break my addiction, my habit, whatever you want to call it, was aligning myself with people who were where I wanted to be. So I joined a lot of Facebook sober communities and online groups and programs. And I found people who were six months, 12 months or more sober. And I learned from them. I reached out to them. I connected with them. And some of them took me under their wing and they gave me tips and they felt like new friends and some of them I became really good friends with. So take the time to align yourself with people who are where you want to be and then learn from them. They've already achieved what you want to achieve and they will know a lot of the answers and they'll be able to help you avoid a lot of the pitfalls. And it also makes sense to replace your old habits with new habits. And one of the things that really helped me was quite simply finding new drinks to have when I used to drink alcohol. And I loved exploring the botanical drinks like Seedlip, Kaleno, Barago. The list is endless. Have a look on the Dry Drinker website and you'll find so many ideas on there. Some people love alcohol-free beers, zero alcohol wines and Proseccos. There's so much for you to explore. Get yourself a new special glass that's just for you, just for your alcohol-free drinks and fill that void. This has worked for so many people. Sometimes just having that glass in your hand allows you to repeat the ritual but has a kind of placebo effect that really helps you forget that you're not drinking alcohol so explore that and get excited about it because there's a lot of wonderful flavors and tastes for you to dive right into 
And it's also important to take a look at your environment. I recommend not having any alcohol in the house. I poured all of mine away. In fact, I put a lot of it outside my house in a box that said free to a good home. And it was gone in like 15 minutes. And then the guy came back, banged on my door and asked if I had any more, which really is rather telling. But you should take the time to think about protecting yourself and getting rid of any booze in the house. Now, if you live with a partner who still drinks and I wouldn't want you to preach to them or tell them what to do with their behavior, this is about you and your journey, nobody else. They'll follow, they'll pay attention, it might take time. And there's another video about that if you wanna check it out but you need to just protect yourself. And if your partner's still drinking, you may want to talk to them. My go-to drink was red wine. And I said to my wife, I don't mind you having Prosecco or white wine because I knew I would never drink those. But is it okay if we don't have red wine in the house? And she was absolutely fine with that. So you may need to compromise. And communication with your partner is absolutely key. You can ask them or tell them what your hopes and expectations are. Doesn't mean you're gonna get it, but I think unless you're vulnerable and you reach out to them, you're gonna find that you can make your own life easier by doing that. You don't wanna put yourself in a place where you think your partner is a mind reader and before you know it, they've bought you home a bottle of wine because it looked like you were down and they thought that that was a good idea. And in fact, they just didn't understand because you'd never had that conversation. So make sure you talk to them try and be as vulnerable as possible even if it feels hard you'll soon see the benefits and you'll reap the rewards from it another great tip is to get a vision board set some goals and then break the goals down into smaller more achievable goals for example quitting alcohol is the big overarching goal now if i was to say to you quit alcohol is your goal do it tomorrow it might feel like a stretch, a bit like if I said to you, I want you to run a marathon and I want you to do it tomorrow. You've done no training. You've not ticked off any of the smaller goals like running 5K, 10K, a half marathon. You wouldn't want to go straight in with the big event. Now, some people do absolutely quit alcohol straight away just like that and never look back and that's wonderful but for a lot of people it's more of a journey and they discover things about themselves they may have some setbacks on the way which they learn from and then they grow so be gentle with yourself and be kind and having a vision board and setting some goals with the different stages to mastering sobriety makes sense and there are five stages which you might have heard me talk about before the first stage is being completely unaware that you've got a problem. And I don't think that's you because you're watching this video. The second stage is being aware you've got a problem, but not really knowing what to do about it. And that can be one of the most uncomfortable stages in the process. The third stage is educating yourself. You start to learn about quitting drinking, the benefits of living alcohol free and the dangers of heavy drinking. And that's possibly where you're at now. And then the next stage is putting what you've learned into practice. You take a break from drinking and you start to get out in the real world with all the tips and the tactics and the information that you've learned. You start to experience socializing sober and maybe even going back into a pub without alcohol if that's something that you wanted to do. You might find you don't want to do that any longer after you've quit drinking. And then the final stage is mastery, where you're no longer thinking about drinking, you're not having cravings for alcohol, and you realise that your new life is so much happier and so much better that you just never look back. So they're the stages. But equally, you could break down some of the attributes that you need to get to as your smaller goals. So it could be that you need to make yourself accountable. You need to have support and connection. You need to have a source of education and learning. Maybe you're using one of my programs or reading one of my books. So you could have all these different things laid out and you could tick them off as you go. And there's a whole bunch of them. And if you are using any of my resources or my free seven day course, that's going to give you all that information so that you can make the smaller goals so that you can see that you're on a path to reaching that bigger goal. But give yourself some rewards too. As you reach those goals, you should reward yourself. And if you're not drinking, you're going to be saving a lot of money. You might have seen the video I did recently where I worked out how much I'd wasted on 
alcohol over the years and I could have bought a house with the money that I'd spent on it. It's absolutely unbelievable. And if you haven't worked that out, if you feel comfortable, get your calculator out and work out how much you've spent on alcohol over the years. But then think how much you're going to save in the future if you quit drinking. Above all, be gentle, allow yourself time. Once this has come into your awareness that you want to change this habit, you want to make a new healthy behavior that doesn't mess or interfere with your life and your relationships, it will happen. You'll keep working on it and you'll keep putting one foot in front of the other. There can be some bumps in the road. There may well be some setbacks and there's more videos about dealing with setbacks, how to overcome them and how to turn them into comebacks. So make sure you check those out. Definitely subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the future videos. And finally, one of the things that really helped me was you get in a piece of paper and draw in, and I'm not a very good artist, a picture of myself as I was at the time I was drinking. And it was a guy who looked like he had really bad anxiety. He wasn't very happy. He was stressed out and he had lots of bad stuff going on in his life, including a daily drinking habit that he just couldn't change. And then on the opposite page, I drew how I wanted to be. That was my vision of myself. And this guy was smiling. His anxiety was reduced. There was no alcohol. He was drinking a coffee, a latte, in fact. And that is who I became. So having a clear vision of who you really are and where you want to get to will help you. So just visualize those two versions of you. And I guarantee if you do the work and you show up each day and learn a little bit more and keep moving forward, you will start to move into becoming exactly that person. And that is a beautiful thing.